At the time of this recording, I have watched all 71 episodes of Skibbity Toilet. It doesn't make any sense, okay? By all rights, this show should be garbage, brain rot. And it is, for the first, like, few videos it is. It absolutely is, and no, yes, absolutely, like, disclaimer. Parents, do not let your kids watch this. They should not be watching this, okay? But then it kept, it, I kept watching, and I kept going. It has plot. It has plot. It has a story, like a genuine story here. It has lore. It has... It has arcs, it has characters, it has actual characters. Uh, characters that I care about, that I can remember, that I can, you know, it has, it has moments of genuine, like, like catharsis and empowering moments where I'm like, yeah, man, get his ass. Um, the toy, like, and the two factions, you know, the cyborgs, the cyborgs which make up camera head people, TV head people, and uh, uh, speaker head people, and you have the toilets, the skibbity toilets on that one side. And... Both sides have compelling characters that I that I follow that I follow I'm willing to follow and look at. You know, um the cyborgs they don't have faces, so and none of them can speak, so you have to follow their their emotions and their personalities based entirely on their body language. And the toilets, they're not just mindless monsters, you know that they that sing a stupid cringy skibbity skibbity yeah, 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 shut shut up, shut up. Song, I hate it so I hate when it, I hate that. I hate why anyway. Um, they're intelligent, they're tactical, they're uh, they have there's politics involved, there's a hierarchy at one point, there's uh, there's like uh, what, what's the word? There's like strife, there's you know, there's a, there's a point where they start fighting amongst themselves. Um, the leader toilet G-Man is genuinely intimidating, scary, he's insanely durable, because, like, the way to kill the toilets, you have to flush their heads, uh, but, flush their human heads, but he, he seems to be immune to that, and he doesn't take any damage, and he can shoot laser eyes, so he's, like, toilet man, dark side, Hitler guy, and what's weird is he's not even the main villain, but he's so damn terrifying, you know, and and genuinely badass too at the same time. You know, um, on on the on the cyborg side, you've got like Titans, uh, ti Titan Titan speaker head, Titan cameraman, Titan uh, TV head. And they're all they all have their own distinct power sets and abilities, and even they, their interactions. You would think they'd just be like giant Titan robots. They don't really do much, but no, they've got personalities. They've got their own. Like ways of approaching it, like of my of the three, the speaker head guy is actually my favorite because like he's this uh, he's is I don't know if it's a he because uh, you know they're 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 robots so whatever but you know he he has he's the hothead of the of the three he's like a hothead he'll just go berserk several different times and at, at, spoiler warning he he gets mind controlled by the toilets because they have these like parasitic toilets that can control the cyborgs and turn them against each other. So, he gets mind control, and he's a problem for a long time until they can finally, they can finally free him from it. Um, you know, the, and the leaders of the, of, the, of the three factions, the leaders of the, the leader of the, of the cameraman, he's got, like, spikes, and he has, he's got, he's got spikes, he's got super strength. The leader of the speaker, speaker people, he's got, you know, at hand, enhanced, like, he can blow... Like, he making noises that really that disrupt the toilets. Uh, leader of the TV people, same thing. They, they have a flashing purple and red lights that just make the toilets explode. Uh, it, it's... It's an amazing... It's actually... This is art. This is, this is genuine art. Like, yes, it is. It is genuine Zoomer... Gen Alpha, whatever you want to call them, it is absolute brain rot. And I, I repeat, do not let your kids watch this. It's just, no, please don't. And I'm not going to recommend it either because it's an acquired taste. But I, I genuinely, I look at this and this is actual art. These are my unfiltered feelings. These are, this is actual art. And yes, I, again, 71 episodes, 72, episode 72 should be coming out this week. And I look forward to it. And, you know, and I, I didn't even talk about the toilet sides, you know, like... 
as I said, none of them could speak. So with so again, the 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 cyborgs they don't have faces. So you follow their body language. The toilets they have facial expressions, which are all super exaggerated and monstrous and meant to be terrifying and whatnot. But then, um, then you get those moments of subtlety where their emotions become more normal, where their their facial expressions are more like human. And then it becomes a case of, oh, wow, okay, now things are getting a bit serious. And I mentioned nobody can speak. And the toilets, they all, they all do the skibbity, skibbity, dop, dop, yes, yes song. Until, uh, and again, spoiler, until one of the big the big bads who, he does speak. And it's, it's absolutely terrifying. Like, it's terrifying when a character in the story finally says words. You know, and, you know, it's... We're getting a bit more history into what this is, and, and you know because of because again because of the, the the ambiguous nature of the story, you have to kind of you know uh, fill in the blanks by yourself, which is a great which is probably the mark of great storytelling because you know the the best stories are the ones that leave you with unanswered questions, so you yourself as an audience can as an audience member can look at it and go, yeah, I want to. This is how I think we came about this, and. Then, and you know, uh, so honestly, yeah, it's Skibbity Toilet is it's art. It's a it's a great series. It's a great TV series. Please don't let your kids watch it, but because uh, just just don't please let them when they get older, let them watch it. And I know that I know that you know it's going to it's eventually it's going to no longer be popular, and people are going to move on because that's the age we live in. But right now, it's. It's a great show, and strangely enough for me, as a creator, as an author, somebody trying to get my stuff out there, um, I find it weirdly inspirational. Because yes, it does use assets from Half-Life and a couple other Val Valve games and different places, but it is, to my knowledge, a, a mostly original story that caught on, and it's very in tune with the cult current culture. Yes, it's got the cringy memes and all that stuff and the Fortnite dances and all that stuff. But, you know, it the way it uses them sometimes can be genuinely fun and genuinely poignant. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's in tune with the culture, but it's not in a way that I think is dated or annoying that I'll be like, this is going to be, you know, forgotten about. Maybe it will be, but I, it's inspirational for me because... Um, I guess it also means it just it's just a way for me to remind me that you know anything is possible, and it's a testament to what success actually is. Success is basically just being lucky because I'm sure the creator, you know, had no idea that this was ever going to this was going to reach the heights that it did. So, uh, you know, kudos to him, and you know I do hope you know I do hope that we get to a definitive conclusion because this thing has been going on for a very long time, and the war seems endless, but. I do hope we get a proper conclusion to this, and, uh, you know, that, uh, at some point, again, I'm not going to recommend it, but I do hope that some people do give it a chance, and that we look back and go, oh, this was actually something, there was actually something here. And, uh, I'm going to keep working on my own stuff, you know, it's, this is, again, as I said, it's inspirational, because I get to work on my own stuff, and I get to think, if this guy can make it, you know, with his concept, I can I can do with mine, and all I need is the right audience, the right kind of people to catch on, and eventually, you know, it'll take off. I think that's that's a that's a good message for just about anybody who's looking to create anything, create their own stories, create their own characters. There really is no excuse <laughs> for not just going out and doing it. If you're not you're not gonna see the same amount of success as he does, but I think. You know, I think we should, you know, all the strive to try and emulate what he's doing, you know. So, yeah, that's, that's, those are my thoughts. Skibbity Toilet. Art.